If you just started in the trucking business, I would highly recommend that you start what I call a traditional dump truck because they go out and they buy these real expensive trucks. And really guys, it's not really necessary. They get into a lot of debt. Welcome to my channel. This is Jay Mancini, where we keep the wheels rolling and the cash flowing. All right, so today we're gonna be talking about the three ways of getting paid in the dump truck business. Whether you're planning on hauling dirt, sand, gravel, or asphalt, there's three ways of getting paid and also the upside and the downside to those three ways of getting paid. The number one way of getting paid is by the load. This is the most common way of getting paid when hauling material. By the load is getting paid a rate based on the material and the amount of material that you're being transported and as well as the distance that you're transporting that material. And here's the upside to getting paid by the load. Getting paid by the load is a straightforward way of knowing how much you're gonna make every time you do a load. This gives you clarity on how much money you can expect to make at the end of the day. So how this can help you, very simple. The more loads you do, the more money you're gonna make. So for instance, if you're getting paid, let's say $80 a load, right? You say, hey, if I do five loads, that's $400 for the day. This also helps you kind of track, you know, how many loads you can expect to make throughout the day. So if your goal is to make, let's say five loads and you're making $80 a day, that's $400. But if you think you can do eight loads, right? And you're getting paid $80. That's $640 for the day. This is a way that you can track how much to make at the end of the day. Next, it also allows you to have a more flexible schedule, meaning the following. Let's just say you're going to work, but that day, for whatever reason, you happen to have to leave early, you get an emergency, you get a phone call. Well, usually when a guy is out there working by the load, they have the flexibility of being able to let's just say do two, three, four loads, and they gotta go home. Hey, unfortunately for them, they have to go, but they have that flexibility where they can go home, right? Or if you decide that, you know what? I wanna work all day and I wanna make more money and do more loads, then great, you can do that as well. Overall, getting paid by the load allows you to determine if the job you're actually on is a good paying job for you. What I mean by that, let's say your outcome was to make $600 in the day. Well, if you're getting paid, let's say again, $80 a load, right? You know that you have to make eight loads to make a little bit over 600. Or if you make seven loads, you're getting close to making $600 a day. But if you're out there and it's half a day, let's just say it's 12 o'clock and you're working a normal schedule like a seven to five, right? And you only have two loads for the day, then you kind of already know, hey, I only have two loads today. That's only what, 80 and 80, $160? Well, I might only be able to get two or three more loads, meaning I'm not gonna get anywhere close to making $600. So that might not be the job you wanna be on. And in that case, if I'm an owner operator, guess what I'm doing? I'm calling the broker or the contractor that hired me and I'm like, hey, this is so-and-so. Hey, I appreciate you giving me a job offer. This is not gonna work out. And that allows you and gives you, you know, the flexibility to also negotiate for a higher paying rate. Now, if I'm the actual broker, in our case, it's very similar to the owner operator. I'm calling the contractor as well and saying, construction company, ABC, listen, I appreciate you giving us this work and giving us this job, but here's the thing, we're not making enough. We thought we were gonna do, you know, let's say eight loads for these trucks, but for whatever reason, they're not getting the loads that they need. Therefore, as a broker, you can also negotiate the contract and how much you think you need to get paid to be able to pay the owner operators as well and therefore everybody can be happy, the owner operators can make money, and you as a broker can also make more money. So those are some of the upsides to when you're hauling by the load. Keep in mind, usually this is probably the most common way, and the reason why it's the most common way, uh, majority of the contractors, they want a set price. They wanna know exactly what it's gonna cost them to move that exact amount of material, meaning that one load of material. And if they have, let's say, 10 loads, then they say, hey, if I'm getting charged $80 for a load and I got 10 loads, it's gonna cost me as a contractor $800 to move all of these loads, right? Or if they have 100 loads, it's $8,000. So normally that's how a contractor would think about it. So then that's the reason why most of the time when they hire dump trucks, whether you're an owner operator or you're a broker, they want a set price by the load. Now the downside of hauling by the load is the following. Whether you're owner operator or again, a broker or inspiring to be a broker or inspiring to be an owner operator, okay? Usually when you're hauling by the load, you're usually gonna burn more fuel. Why? Because naturally you're trying to do more loads to make more money, right? Which, what does that mean? That means that you're gonna burn more fuel. So regardless, if you're the owner operator, you wanna make sure you know how to calculate how much you're gonna have in expenses and fuel 
And if you're also aspiring to be a broker, same thing, because guess what? You're going to be hiring those owner operators. So you want to make sure there's enough money in there whenever you get paid by the load. If you want to know how to calculate fuel costs and you want to know that formula, stick around for the end of the video. I have that bonus for you. The second way of getting paid in the dump truck business, by the ton. By the ton is based on the type and amount of materials transport. By the ton is essentially the same thing as getting paid by the load, except there's a few differences. Let me tell you about them. So when you're getting paid by the ton, you're actually getting paid based on how many tons the truck can haul. What I mean by tons is the actual weight that dump truck can carry. In other words, how much material that truck get loaded with and actually haul. Getting paid by the ton also means you will earn more money based on how many tons your truck can haul. And let me explain that to you, okay? If you have a guy that, let's say, has a truck out there that is a 15-ton truck, meaning that truck can haul up to 15 tons, okay? And let's say the contractor is gonna pay you $10 a ton to haul some gravel, okay? We're playing scenarios here. I'm giving you guys example. So let's say your friend has that 15-ton truck and the contractor is getting uh, paying you $10 a ton. Well, guess what? Simple math, $10 a ton, he can haul 15 tons. That's $150 for each load. Now, let's say you come around and you have a truck that can haul 25 tons and you're hauling the same gravel for the same contractor at $10 a ton. Well, $10 a ton, your truck hauls 25 tons. That's $250 per load. And you guys are hauling the same material and going to the same place. And guys, here's the thing. By hauling more tons, meaning hauling more material in each load, this also gives you the flexibility of you not having to actually do as many loads throughout the day. Let me explain, okay? If you have your friend, going back to your friend that has a truck that has a 15 ton capacity, you know, for, in order for him to make the same amount of money as you do throughout the day, he's gonna have to do more loads. Why? Because his truck can only haul 15 tons. Yours hauling 25, meaning you haul 10 more tons every load, at the end of the day, even if you just haul three or four loads, you're hauling 30 to 40 more tons than he is. And if you multiply that, going back to the $10 example, you just made an extra three, $400 that he didn't. This also means, guys, that you have a more of a predictable income. And what I mean by that, going back to that example, right? Uh, if you say, okay, well, I have a 25 ton truck. I do four loads and I'm getting paid again $10 a ton. Hey, you know what that means? Four loads, each load is $250. 250 times four, that's a thousand bucks right there. Overall, hauling by the ton increases your efficiency. Again, you haul more material, you do less loads, and you make more money. Now here's a potential downside to hauling by the ton. Hauling by the ton is usually more of what a experienced owner operator would do, meaning the following. If you just started in the trucking business, I would highly recommend that you start what I call a traditional dump truck, okay? Just a regular dump truck. Some of these trucks that haul more weight, like 18, 20, or 25 tons, they're called super dumps or mega dumps, depending on where you're located throughout the US. And these trucks have more functions because again, they carry more weight. So naturally it would require a more experienced driver. And don't worry, we got a video coming out soon that will explain more about how these uh, super dumps or mega dumps function. Another downside to hauling by the ton, if you're going out there looking to purchase one of these bigger trucks, you're probably gonna find that they're pretty expensive, especially nowadays. So again, that's why I don't recommend sometimes starting right off the back, buying a real expensive truck because they can get very pricey, guys. Believe me, I know. Again, I recommend maybe you can start off with a smaller dump truck, a traditional dump truck, and then once you get comfortable into the dump truck business and learning more about dump trucks, then you can go ahead and take the following step of possibly getting yourself into what I call a super dump. So this is also how sometimes guys, when they first start into the dump truck business, they get into a lot of debt because they go out and they buy these real expensive trucks. And really guys, it's not really necessary. See, the way I, I believe to do things is you wanna start off small, learn the business, and then you scale your business. And don't worry, again, like I mentioned earlier, we will have a video coming soon explaining the differences about dump trucks. If you wanna know more about them, please type it up, send us a comment. We'll do a video explaining the different types of dump trucks. The third way of getting paid in the dump truck business, by the hour, meaning getting paid on a set hourly rate. 
Hourly rate means you come in an agreement if you're an owner operator with either the broker or the contractor that's hiring you. And if you're a broker or an aspiring broker, you come to an agreement with the contractor or general contractor that will be hiring you. The hourly rate is set on different factors. The first factor is what type of dump truck will be utilized to do the work. The second factor is where the job is being located and how far you have to travel to move the material. And the third one is the location of where you're doing the work. So there's many upsides of getting paid by the hour. The first one is having a sense of security, meaning you already know how much money you're gonna expect to make for that day. Let me explain to you guys. Okay, let's say you're gonna get hired to work for 10 hours. Let's say 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., which is your typical in the dump truck industry, okay? And let's say the contractor or the broker hires you and they say, hey, the hourly rate is $60 an hour, okay? $60 an hour, meaning if you work 10 hours for that day at $60 an hour, you already know coming in, you're gonna make $600 for that day. Or if the hourly rate is $70 and you're gonna work for 10 hours, then again, you already know you're gonna make $700 for that day, okay? And the same thing goes if you're a broker. If you're a broker or inspiring to become a broker, you negotiate that with the contractor that is hiring you. It's a win-win situation for everybody Reason why is the owner operators already know how much money to expect to make coming in before they even get on the job and the broker does as well. This leads to the following, regardless of how many loads or how many tons you transport, guys, you already know how much you're gonna make, okay? So what I mean by that is the following. Let's just say, let's play some scenarios. Let's just say that you're transporting material from point A to point B. Okay, and in the process from point A to point B, uh, there was an accident. Well, guess what? You're not having to sit there and stress about dropping that load and going back for another one. Why? You're getting paid by the hour, okay? So that's a main benefit. The other thing is, at some point in time, nature takes its course, and let's say you're at the construction job site, and for whatever reason, their excavator or the machinery breaks down. Well, guess what? You're getting paid by the hour, so, you're still earning money until they're ready to get that equipment fixed or bring another one on site and you continue to make money because you're basically getting paid uh, by the hour. So regardless to whatever happens externally, whatever things, in other words, you can't control, you're still gonna get paid because guess what? You're there doing your job and there's things that happen that you cannot help, but you're still gonna get paid. Getting paid hourly is also a good way of getting paid when you're on a job that requires standby time. What do I mean by standby time? There's gonna be several jobs out there, and this happens quite often, that for whatever reason, the nature of that job just requires for you just to kind of sit tight, uh, meaning the following. You get to the job, you show up, and the contractor, for whatever reason, is not ready, or you show up to the job, and it's a what, I, what do we call a slow-paced job, meaning they may have traffic control, they may have to put cones out there. They may have to uh, stop what they're doing for whatever reason and stop traffic to get your truck to come in and get loaded. So there's a lot of different scenarios, right? Well, this is kind of like standby time. Well, essentially, even though you're really not physically hauling the material, you're still getting paid just for being on the job site. So these scenarios usually happen on the type of jobs that usually have road work. And reason why is, just to kind of give you guys an idea, road work for the most part is something that really has a high safety uh, rating, uh, meaning that you can't sit there, get loaded and just take off. You have to have a lot of safety protocols. Going back to what I was saying, you're gonna have people that are gonna probably be out there you know, flagging traffic in order to get the trucks to come in and get out. Uh, you may have a slow excavation process, meaning it's not like they're gonna sit there and load you real quick and you're gonna you know, take off and go get the next load. It may take them a long time to, to load your truck and in the process of them taking you know, several minutes, time ticks and guess what? it's gonna be more beneficial for you to get paid by the hour instead of getting paid by the load. So you need to know about the jobs that you will be doing, whether again, you're an owner operator or a contractor, you need to know if hourly is better for you than getting paid by the load. Overall, when getting paid hourly, you'll be compensated for your time being spent on that job 
and it will also help you manage and budget your fuel costs. So I have two bonus tips for you, and believe me, these are very important. Regardless whether you're an owner operator or a broker or an inspiring owner operator, inspiring broker, these are two things you need to know. Tip number one, calculate how many miles you will travel on each load and divide that by the miles per gallon that the truck consumes, meaning the following. Let's just say your truck gets an average of six miles to the gallon, okay? And let's just say that you're gonna be traveling 100 miles for each load, round trip, and now you divide that by six miles, that is going to give you 16.6 gallons that you have utilized on every load. So what do you do now? You get that 16.6 gallons that you have utilized, and you multiply that times the cost of the fuel in your city. So let's just say fuel's $5 a gallon in wherever you're located. You multiply five times 16.6 and it should give you roughly about $83. So now you know that that one load cost you $83 of fuel. Okay, so tip number two guys is extremely important. Okay, whether you're a broker, owner operator, guys, I highly recommend you have to do this. Whoever's hiring you, whether you're the owner operator being hired by a broker or a contractor or the broker being hired by a contractor or general contractor first before going to that job site, make sure you have a payment agreement. So what I would recommend is using some type of documented agreement showing how much you're gonna make or how much you're gonna charge them, right, before you actually go on the job. Why is this so important? Well, guys, obviously you know you wanna get paid for the work that you do, right? But if for whatever reason you go out there, you do the job, and next thing you know, the contractor says, I didn't agree to pay you $100 a load or $80 a load or whatever you guys agreed on, guess what, a big problem. So make sure that again, before you go on the job, no matter if you're an owner operator or a broker, make sure that you have some kind of documented agreement on how much you're gonna charge, whether it's by the load, by the ton, or an hourly set rate. This is Jay Mancini. I hope you found this valuable. Guys, drop some comments. Let me know what kind of videos you wanna see, and we'll get here with the team, and we'll try to do our best to follow up with those videos. See you soon. Bless you.